Hey, it's Peter. Um, just wanted to jump on this meeting call. Uh, just to go through some questions that have been coming up uh, during the clinic. Um, the one I want to cover first of all today is the issue of long COVID. So we've had a few people coming in who feel that they've had COVID and are struggling to recover from it. And they're worrying about uh, what's going on in the media uh, about this thing called long COVID. Um, you know, it's the symptoms they've been showing. I'll, I'll go through the symptoms that are on the NHS website and um, some of the things that our clients have been exhibiting. And I'll show you what, or I'll tell, talk through what we did uh, and the results of that. And I'll give you my opinion at the end as what I think is going on. Um, so let's see if we can get the NHS website up. Okay. So basically what we've got is this is the NHS website. It's talking about the long-term effects of coronavirus. So the sort of symptoms that we're talking about are extreme tiredness and fatigue, shortness of breath, chest pain or tightness, brain fog, difficulty sleeping, heart palpitations, dizziness, pins and needles, joint pain, tinnitus, earaches, and so on. So the the trouble is that the fact that, that we're getting this thing called long COVID being identified means there's an industry developing around it. Um, and then people get labeled as, quotes, long COVID sufferers, and they get all the medication and so on without looking for other potential causes. So generally what you find with any infection is it depletes the immune system. And when the immune system is depleted, then you're going to get issues. So one way to think about it is if you, if you imagine your body's like a car and it normally does 30 miles per gallon, excuse me, just have a cup of tea. <coughs> it normally does 30 miles per gallon. So every 30 miles, you put another gallon of petrol in. So when it's under stress with an infection going on, it's using more fuel. So it's only doing 15 miles per gallon, but you're, you're only putting in a gallon every 30 miles. So you can imagine that fuel tank gets lower and lower and lower. And when the fuel tank is low with the immune system, you can get muscle aches, fatigue, joint aching. Um, and the other thing that can happen is that, generally speaking, the a virus or particularly COVID and possibly the reaction to the COVID vaccination will cause inflammation in the body. When you're inflamed, it tends to reduce the strength of the ligaments. So it attacks the weak spots in your spine. So if the top of the neck goes out, particularly if you've got weak spots in the spine and you're coughing a lot, you might put the top of the neck out of line. That's going to cause headaches, um, eye problems, tinnitus, things like that. If you've rattled your chest around, it's going to affect the movement of the ribs. So if the ribs are out of line, they can't do this movement easily when you're trying to breathe. So you'll get the shortness of breath. You can sometimes get pain along here because you get costochondritis. So if you've got, obviously, if you've got severe pain, particularly on the left-hand side going down your arm, you need to check that out because um, there have been uh, cardiac effects seen with these things so you need to check that out but what I've found in the clinic is that if you adjust the neck 
and it sorts out the headaches generally. Um, and then adjusting the ribs will tend to get rid of the shortness of breath and the breathing problems generally and the, uh, the chest pain. So it's not, so it's, my belief is that there, there'll be some people who've had a severe inflammation reaction either to the COVID itself or to the vaccination. And that has caused some organ damage. Um, and that needs to be checked carefully. For the majority of people, I think all that's happening is that you're getting a normal uh, response to an infection, which is immune system being depleted and the spine and the nervous system being rattled around. So the answers to the immune system being depleted are take a, a really good quality multivitamin that's designed to boost your immune system up. So if you think your you know your normal diet is normally enough because you're putting in a gallon of petrol every 30 miles, now you have to double the intake and you don't want to double the intake of food because then you'll get all sorts of other problems. So you can just top up just sometimes just for a week of multivitamins and that's enough to bring you back up to kilter then the engine starts working properly and you're back to 30 miles a gallon again um the yeah, as i said the problems with the neck headaches and so on and the chest pain they're usually easily sorted so if you're worried about any of those things um or got any questions about any of that if you could give me a ring or email me on peter at yourspinalhealth.com and I'll answer your questions either directly or next time we do one of these um, meetings. Okay, so I hope that's sorted with that. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover was um, the, there's been a few people asking me about vertigo and balance problems. So this tends to happen more with older people, I find. And you can get a situation where, um, well, there's, there's, there's a gradual onset vertigo and balance problems. So what you can have there is um, brain diseases, long-term long onset brain diseases like Parkinson's and so on. Uh, very often what is ha actually happening is you're just getting deterioration in the neck and that's affecting the nerves in the brainstem. So the brainstem nerves will affect the balance centers in the inner ear. Um, so it's worth looking at that before you um, worry too much about going down medication route. Um, Sometimes it's quite easily sorted or at least um, alleviated. The thing, the thing I'd be very careful with though, is if you have sudden onset vertigo. So this is where you have, you've banged your head, had a fall, something like that, and you're suddenly feeling very dizzy. You do need to get that checked medically, maybe with a CT scan or something like that, because if that can be things like a brain bleed, which needs to be dealt with immediately. So um, as with a lot of the things we deal with, if it's a, if something's been long standing, gradually long standing, gradually building up, um, and it's you know, that can often be sorted out by adjusting the neck. Anything that's sudden, unusual. Um, um, not been experienced before that i would advise people to get checked out medically before they come to us um, obviously if there's if they can't find anything wrong with the brain then it's worth looking at adjusting the neck so i hope that has been useful so what i'm going to do is uh, 
once this video is recorded, I'm going to post it up on Facebook. As I say, I'm going to just do these on regular intervals, just answering questions that have come up in the clinic. And I'm trying to keep it short so uh, it doesn't take too long to watch. So what we covered today was vertigo and balance problems and long COVID. So any questions about those or any other issues that come up, even if you're not a, a client of ours, uh, as I say, just email me on peter at yourspinalhealth.com and I'll answer your questions.